Welcome to Melting Point Studios, which is what this is called. Um, it is a pretty old building. Meryl Patak, a silversmith, welder, and a young artist, often describes herself as a huge outer space nerd. Her work relies on her own personal narrative and the concept of a universal connection. I do multimedia art. Um, a lot of different mediums. I use steel, organics, found objects, jewelry, um, all sorts of metals, and experimental processes as well as neon. I try to combine them all together. She uses neon here, but she also uses wood, metal, and real roses. Her connection seemed artwork becomes a shining glowing centerpiece of the gallery representing her. Neon is a commercial medium used for advertising, um, so it's interesting when it's used in an artistic context because it's almost as if the artist is advertising their ideas. It gets a lot of attention. Attention. Artists love attention. Mara's most recent work, New Moon, connects silver, wood, and neon. She makes artwork that is not only unique, but also useful. Useful because... Uh, it it kind of shows the collector that it can be used on, in like a living room or in any practical place where you might want shelving. And then also, I just love the metal detail and the texture of the metal along the moons as you go. And unique because... Uh, neon art is obviously very different from paintings and photography. Uh, neon is somewhat sculptural as well as an illuminated uh, medium. And so it definitely has its own uniqueness and originality to it. Mara's work is professional both in its quality and materials. It's also remarkable for expressing emotion by combining images with letters and words. For two reasons I chose to use the words. Number one, because of its direct translation from advertising and commercial um, applications, and also because words are the hardest thing to do in neon and to get them right. We got lucky. We got to see Meryl in action and her work in its process. While you're bending, you're bending on a paper pattern, but it has a metal screen so it protects it from burning, so it doesn't catch the paper on fire. And then when you bend, you're in the fire here, and then you come over and you lay it on top of the pattern to make sure that your bends are really, really good. And all the while, you're making sure that the glass doesn't like kink on itself. Her can of art takes time. The best effects are achieved through reputation, patience, and adaptation. And here you have a cursive H. Super small and cute. While I tried to learn some of her processes, I understood a little bit how metal feels when she is working. Away from the, away from the crack. So pull out. Oh, there you go. There is a sense of focus and calm. There is also a deep sense of satisfaction, especially when you get something right. <laughs> exactly, like you're rolling some a cigarette or a joint or something. Yep, there you go. That's a good puff. I thought the whole thing was so satisfying and so intriguing. I began to wonder more about Meryl. Like, who showed Meryl how to do this? Who sparked her imagination? who lit her neon torch. Her teacher, Ho Kainan, is also a neon artist. He's been using neon in fine art for over 20 years. Well, I love her artwork, mm -hmm. yeah. But I think one of the things that's interesting is that, that uh, a lot of her use of neon is graphic, so it's not that far from the commercial use of it. The commercial use in signs is, is often graphic, either in text or in graphic images, and she uses text and graphic images. Meryl isn't the first artist to work in neon, and she doesn't just work in neon. In fact, she connects many materials together. She's what you might call a mixed media pop artist. One great example of this style is her piece, 
journey. Journey, it's phonetic spelling for, um, for journey. And it's spelled out for you right there, but it's obscured at the same time. Um, people whose na native language is English don't know journey to be spelled this way, and they are forced to sound it out and spend a little bit, bit more time with that word, and it makes it an intimate experience for them with the piece. A little test true of light from our huge outer space nerd. Neon always implies in my work that like little habitat of like atoms in a fury being lit up and like bringing life to something. Weather is real. Life roses that die in her artwork are words, are natural materials, are chemical elements. Mara is obviously interested in bringing things to life. And like all life, the journey begins down a long tube. And at the end of that tube, it's a little bit of light.